Thank you, Scott. We greatly appreciate your talents. There was a couple, they were in their late 80s, and they had been married for 60 years, and though they were far from wealthy, they were really uh, just very focused on health and fitness and wholeness, particularly the wife. She would constantly nag to say, you know, we've got to eat healthy, eat healthy. We've got to exercise. We've got to work out. We've got to be in great shape. We've got to stay healthy. We want to live as long as we can. And all of their efforts seemed to pay off. One day they went on vacation and unfortunately their airplane crashed and they arrived in heaven. There at the pearly gates, they met St. Peter who welcomed them and began to offer them a tour of heaven. And the first stop was their beautiful mansion. And as they walked into this gorgeous mansion, uh, the uh, husband looked and saw a maid hanging up their favorite clothes. And uh, just the master bathroom had a waterfall in it. And oh, it was full of gold everywhere. And oh, it was just glorious and grand. And he said, how much does this cost? And he goes, it's your reward. This is heaven. You've earned your reward. Wow, he said, and looking around, he said, uh, out the window, he looks, well, well, there's a champion golf uh, golf course out there. Championship golf course, we can play golf in heaven? Yes, of course, it's your reward. How much does that cost? It's your reward. What are the green fees? Nothing, it's your reward. Wow, he thought this was pretty amazing. And then they moved down a little bit further and discovered a lavish buffet and all this delicious food. And they kept saying, wow, you mean I can have steak and seafood and I can have all this exotic desserts and I can eat vegan if I, oh, I can have all this kind of stuff. It's all there. Wow. Yes, it's your reward. But wait, 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 wait a minute. He says, where are all the low fat, cholesterol, low cholesterol foods and the decaffeinated tea and all of this kind of stuff? Well, it's not required here. You can eat whatever you want. No one gains weight. This is your reward. He said, wow, this is fantastic. Heaven is really fantastic, full of rewards. Wait, no gym we have to work out? Not unless you want to. <laughs> no testing by blood sugar and uh, my blood pressure. Uh, you know, uh, never again. Uh, it's your reward. What a reward. I am truly in a wonderful place. And then the man turned to his wife and just looked at her and said, you know, you and your crazy bran muffins. Had we not had that, we'd have been here 10 years earlier. <laughs> well, rewards in heaven. How about rewards right here on earth? right here and now. Do you understand that God is offering us some amazing rewards? A life that is full of abundance and prosperity and blessings, success, love, everything that we so desire, it's available right here and now. Even in the midst of challenge and crisis, it's available. It's all available for God as this wonderful spirit of generosity. In fact, our very universe is designed and created under this very principle of loving, care, and generosity being offered at all times, 24-7, available to us. We find in Colossians chapter 3, verse 23 through 24, whatever you do, do your work wholeheartedly, for as uh, for the Lord rather than for men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the reward of inheritance. A reward. Rewards right here and now. Now, it's not talking about when you die, you receive your rewards. So certainly there are those there. But here, right now, in the day-to-day -day journey, are opportunities for us to experience the very highest and best, the blessings, the goodness of God. We receive these rewards right here and now in many different shapes and forms. And I have to tell you, life offers all kinds of beautiful blessings. I love the rewards of a surprise flower in my garden. I had some irises pop up late fall and I'm like, what? Some beautiful flowers and just the joy that they brought to me. I love the rewards of early morning sunrise and the birds singing. I love the rewards and the blessings of the prosperity of the goodness of friends and fellowship and encouragement that have supported me so greatly through times of challenge in my life. I love the rewards that are so tangible in so many different ways in the physical world as well. 
I love the rewards of success and blessing, uh, financial prosperity. You see rewards come in all different shapes and forms here on this earth. I love the rewards of peace, joy, contentment, compassion, forgiveness, and so much more. They're all available to us in this journey of our lifetime. But here's the challenge. So many of us don't think about God rewarding us or God's generosity. We don't think about it because, and we never really comprehend it until we grasp this truth of who and what we are. Because we're constantly thinking, wait a minute, God is not generous. God is withholding. I've had to beg and plead and insist to try to get God to bless. I've had to work so hard. I've had to just insist. It seemed like God was not even listening. I've had to beat my chest in all different ways in hopes that somehow God would listen and offer prosperity or blessing to my life. Pastor, you don't know all the challenges I've gone through. Ah, but there's a big shift in our life. The moment we begin to understand who and what we are, that we are children of God, children of God, children of the divine source, children for the source of infinite prosperity, the children of the source of infinite possibilities within our world. Romans chapter 8, verse 17 from the New Testament shares with us, you are a child of God, heir to all the good of the universe. Heir to all the good of this universe. Since we are his children, we are his heirs. In fact, together with Christ, we are heirs in God's glory. All of the power, presence, the might of the divine, we are heir to. Wow. God's got a great payout. There is great generosity to be offered to us if we begin to change our thinking and know that the divine source has a plan for our prosperity and our blessing. Galatians chapter four, verse seven says, so you are no longer a slave, but a son. And since you are a son, you are also an heir through God that all this goodness entitled to our life is coming through this divine source. Now, we may look through the goodness coming through us all kinds of earthly sources in the physical realm, and we begin to struggle with those that are so limited. And we begin to ask the question, how, how, how in the physical realm is the divine generosity going to unfold for me? How will I experience it? It seems so impossible. Pastor, do you understand I'm on a fixed income or I live in a limited way or I've lost my job or I am all alone or I've lost a loved one in my life? How can I be blessed with all these good things? Oh, you're the heir. And the generosity of the universe is constantly at work, desiring to bless and to see for your highest and best. You're no longer a slave. Understand that you are the child. You're not the slave. You're not the one who has to cowardly stand in fear and try to approach, but knowing that you are the child of the divine and that divine love is ever there for you. So let me tell you this. Your circumstances are not accidents. Where you are in life is not an accident. The blessings that you experience are not accidents. The challenges you may go through are not accidents. You are cause and your circumstances are the effect. Do we understand this? What is cause? Cause being defined as giving rise to or action that will bring about an effect. So we then have this wonderful power within us to make choices, to create cause, to create something to happen that brings about the effect we so desire within our lives. So wait a minute, I don't know if I understand cause and effect. Oh, but you do. You go through it every day in your life. Things like, I never brush my teeth and I have five cavities. Oh, okay. So we understand cause creating the effect. How about I broke my arm and the doctor put it in a cast. We understand cause creating an effect. I flipped the light switch on and the light came on. We understand cause creating effect. Since the refrigerator is practically empty, I had to go to the grocery store. What an effect. Cause creating an effect. You see, we live in this realm constantly where we create a cause or we generate cause and we create effect. So nothing in our life happens by accident. It's a result of cause. 
and so it is. We see cause in this world that we live in two worlds. The world of cause from within and the world of effect from without. So wherever we are and whatever we're doing throughout our day, we realize that we are creating cause that's bringing about an effect within our life. And let me tell you this, this is so comforting. So comforting because it just brings about and ushers in a great assurance and perfect peace that says, wow, I can create and unfold the highest and best. I can be the cause for good in my life. I can be the one who makes the choice to celebrate the generosity of the divine in my life and by faith open my life up to receive it. I'm the one who can make the choice to let go of the how within this earthly realm and trust completely in the divine, knowing that God is in control. Wow, I can be the cause that ushers in, that rises up the effect of the highest and best in my life. When we recognize we are cause, we realize how much control we have over shaping our life and the effects that we're experiencing. The power to choose our outcome and to initiate this cause, well, it opens the doors for the effects that you so desire in your life. So what if you're the cause for great generosity that says, I believe and I'm open to receive. I begin to anticipate, I live in expectancy as our ministry theme is for this year. Because as we live in that expectancy, as we live in the power of believing that I'm the child of God and God's generosity is fully at work, we just rest and walk in the effect of great blessing. Now, this year with COVID-19, many people would say, this is not the year to do a lot of expansion. Yet the spirit of this whole pandemic has caused people to create a new effect to cause people to think in new ways, to move in new directions, to open their lives up to all kinds of exciting new ways of God working. And as a result, believing in expectancy that some amazing things would unfold. Here at City of Light, we just renovated our kitchen. How did that happen in a time when financial challenge is so great and our revenue is at an all time low, yet God makes a way when there seems to be no way. We expanded our wisdom center to prepare for even greater things happening in 2021, creating a class environment, a uh, space for greater multimedia and expansion, and expanding an educational facility, uh, a lending library of metaphysical books. Wow, does it all happen? Because we live in the expectancy that God is good and that goodness is unfolding in our lives no matter what's going on in this physical world. Pandemic or not, does it make God better or less than? Do you see, God's not concerned about all the things that we're going through in the physical world. God does, isn't diminished when it rains or when there's a hurricane or the wind is strong or there's a, any more than God is diminished when there's sunlight. You know, God is not diminished at all. It doesn't matter what's going on in the world is what I'm trying to say to you doesn't matter, but we get so consumed and absorbed by what's happening in our world. And so constantly we think because of the experiences we're going through in this world, we kind of think God must be limited, but there's equal opportunity for God to provide God's wonderful payout of blessings and reward for you here and now. The key thing is nothing is actually given to you. You get what you earn. You get what you earn. There was a woman sitting in her garden and she was looking with great bewilderment, wondering why there was nothing rising up and growing. She thought, this is crazy. I have this wonderful garden. I have this beautiful space. Why is nothing growing? Oh, you have to plant something to see something grow. You're not gonna get anything unless you earn it unless there's some sense of investment put into it. So matter you can't just sit on your sofa and expect to see all kinds of tomatoes growing in your garden and corn and peas and beans and vegetables galore. You're thinking, oh, how wonderful. I just sat on my sofa and it all appeared. Oh, wouldn't that be lovely? But that's not how it works. The beauty of the unfolding of the generosity of the divine in this universe 
is based on that which we invest. It comes back to us, that which we do. So we earn everything that we get. We have the responsibility then to create, to initiate, to launch, to bring about this effect. And here's what's so important. Do not expect more or better than what you've earned. And at the same time, do not expect less or poorer than what you've earned. Because it's all about your investment. And it is there, it is given to us to the degree, to the level, in accordance with our faith, our power of believing, our service, our ability to rise up and to create and to manifest, to create these wonderful effects within our life. The scripture says God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you could ask or think according to the power, according to, according to the power that's working in us. Oh, there must be a power that's working in us. That power is faith. That power is that creative energy that we put out that becomes the cause that brings about the effect within our world, within our life. So it's really important that we think big, work big, and do big because it's in accordance with that rather than think small, do small, be small, and get small. You see, because what we are doing is investing each and every day, creating cause that's bringing about effect, unfolding God's generosity in us, through us, around us, and always for us. I want to call to your attention that today is the fruits of your yesterday. What you're experiencing today is the fruit of what you brought about yesterday. What did you do yesterday in a life of expectancy? in your life of great faith, in the power of your believing, in stepping out? What did you do? Because that's what you're experiencing today. Because you believed and you set forth a course of vision and a plan and you began to instigate it, it is then that the fruits will appear today. What you did yesterday are the fruits. And tomorrow is the bud on the stalk of today. You might look at that, oh, ooh, that bloom is ready to blossom. It's ready to unfold. That is my tomorrow because I'm investing. I am creating. I am cause that's bringing about effect. Now your progress in the journey of life is really not based on material wealth. We kind of think, okay, rewards, rewards. Okay, that's all about material wealth, right? Oh, it's so much more because there is a priceless wealth that comes to us when we open our life to greater understanding consciousness, wisdom, enlightenment. It enables you to live the richer life. It enables you to live the life of great reward. It enables you to live the life of great success in your life. So it's so important that we allow this wonderful wisdom, this unfolding of truth to happen within our lives that enables us to experience the highest and best. So when we receive this insight, this wisdom, when we receive this understanding, what happens is we make a shift in our thinking. There is a big shift and we are so glad shift happens. That's right, shift happens in our lives when we begin to embrace God thoughts, the consciousness, the awareness, the understanding of the divine. How God thinks is how I wanna think. I want the mind of Christ in me, for the scripture says uh, that we're to embrace the very mind, put on the mind of Christ, embrace this mind, the thinking that Jesus had, the thinking of the Christ mind is the thinking of, I'm an heir, I'm an heir to all good. Wow, when I realized that, I realized that as I move through this world, as I believe, as I create, I know that all goodness is unfolding in my life. And what happens is our thinking changes. We think in a new way. We uh, let go of these thoughts of limitation and our mind now moves to the heavenly conditions of the divine, understanding that, wow, all good is mine. All good is mine every single day. I am in the wonderful creating mode of thoughts that are constantly welcome the all good 
because that is how I create the effect that's going to bring about that which I desire within my life. So life is this exchange between you and God. You get to name what's exchanged and how much is exchanged. Think about this for a moment. You get to give up your ignorance for God's wisdom. Wow, I'd like to exchange a lot of that. My limited understanding for infinite understanding. I want to give up my framework of limited possibilities in thought, and I want to welcome infinite possibilities. I want to do this exchange, and I want to exchange it to a high degree, to a high level. Let me get rid of all of this ignorant thinking that has held me back and let me rise up in the wisdom of the divine. Let me begin to think in the godly realm of this universe that created all that we experience within this world and the world around us. You give up your thoughts of limited good for God's unlimited goodness. You give up your thoughts of weakness for God's infinite power. You give up your thoughts of being powerless for this divine strength. Wow. Think of what we could exchange when we begin to release the limiting things that we have and we exchange it out. Wow, there is an amazing payout and an amazing reward for our lives. You give uh, and you get so much more in return. I want to really understand that because when we give, we get so much more back. So giving up of our limited understanding, we get so much more of infinite understanding because life is ever rewarding us and life is generous and eager to bless and eager to give, eager to care for us and eager to provide for us. But the key to get is you must give. The key to getting is you must give. If you try to get without giving, what happens is your heart becomes very hardened, becomes very self-focused. You will feel that you must be served without regard for the welfare of others around you. It's kind of like the Dead Sea. Years ago, I had the opportunity to go to Israel and explore the Dead Sea, to walk along the water's edge as a salty bay of bed of water. It was beautiful reflection out in the golden desert sands. The turquoise waters were stunning as you arrived, but only to discover everything is dead. It is so dead and so filled with, full of salt because there's no outlet. There's no giving. It's all taking. Water runs in and it stays there. And there it is. It just becomes a bed of salt water. So buoyant is anyone who gets into the waters you really can't swim. You just float because there's so much salt that is contained there. The water's undrinkable, but you see it is the Dead Sea because it doesn't give. And so we discover in our own lives how important it is if we want to receive, we must be one who gives. For in that giving, this life force continues in a dynamic way and we become a vibrant vessel in life. So we understand that we must have take on the very spirit of saying, what can I give? Because I know as I invest, I am creating cause, cause of generosity that's going to bring about effective generosity in my life. Here's a challenge. I challenge you to erase in giving to this universe and to see if you can disperse more rapidly and more fully than God can reimburse you. Wow, think about that. I'm going to give more love than God could reimburse me with. Try that. Just try it because you'll find that's impossible. I'm going to give more grace than God could give. Wait a minute. That's impossible. I'm going to give more forgiveness. I'm going to forgive you, 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 you. I'm going to forgive everybody. I'm going to just give unlimited forgiveness. Oh, wow. I can't outgive God, can I? because that's the essence of the divine at work. Its power is unlimited. We, in our physical resources, face limitations all the time. So we understand, wow, I could never outgive the generosity of God. When we understand this metaphysical, metaphysical law, what our mental attitude about giving should be, that we should give in the consciousness 
of God's inexhaustible resources. We should measure everything that we give out with the very thoughts of, I'm giving out a portion of God's divine bounty, infinite blessing. I'm sharing just a portion of it. That's all. I, yeah, wow, there is so much more yet to do, to give. In my garden, we planted some rebloomers, hydrangea bushes that are rebloomers. Well, the more you cut the blooms, the more flowers you get. Now, you could say, well, wait, I, I just don't want to give any flowers away. I don't want to cut them. I just want to enjoy them for myself. I just want to keep, well, what happens is we limit the amount of blooms that we have. Ah, but when we begin to cut the blooms off and share them with neighbors and friends and, and give them away and, and offer opportunities in the spirit of generosity, we find more and more blooms coming in and the plant begins to flourish in a powerful way. So it is in our life. When we understand the power of generosity, of giving, giving in so many unique and wonderful ways, love, grace, smiles, cheer, words of kindness, giving in tangible ways of blessing someone, just expressing this wonderful power within our lives. We're creating cause, it's bringing about effect. I wanna tell you this, one of the great Jewish traditions of ancient time was that when someone asks of you anything, give something, give something. So maybe you could have a few quarters in your car or dollar bills or some uh, uh, wonderful uh, guidance uh, direction where someone could receive food or assistance, some information that you might have. So when you pull up to the stop sign, someone's asking of you, you can celebrate the spirit of generosity and do so without any judgment. Just roll your window down and says, here's what I can give to you today. I just want to make sure that I am in the spirit of creating cause that brings about the effect that I desire in my own personal life. So how might I give? Because I can't outgive God. So I want to keep giving and challenging God. The more I demonstrate a generosity in many different ways of love and peace and joy, happiness, contentment, forgiveness, and so much more, the more I receive it myself in unlimited ways. When you give up anything, it's because you know you have plenty. It's coming to that place of knowing I have plenty. Here's our biggest challenge in our world. We hoard, we hold on because we think there's not enough. There's not enough. And so we, oh, I better save this. I better hold this because there's not going to be enough in this world. There won't be enough to go around for everybody. So instead, I've got to find a way to hoard it, to hold on to all of this stuff. You see, when we've come to the place of understanding there's unlimited resources in God, that's complete trust and complete belief. We release any desire to hoard but we want to be participants in the great generosity in this world. We want to be people who are giving freely because we know there is enough. Now, how do you come to that place of knowing that there's enough in your life when you're always looking at the physical? Beautiful story within the Old Testament of the woman who uh, had just a meager amount of oil and meal and was approached by the prophet who said to her, her would you make me a meal? Uh, would you make me a cake, something uh, that I might eat? And she's like, well, all I have is this last little amount of oil and meal and we're going to make something for my son and I and then we're going to die because that's it. We have no other means. My husband is gone. We have no way of making and generating funds. We're just living in the realm of limitation. And so I've been hoarding and holding on to this. But instead what happened, she made a shift in cause that created a dynamic effect. She said, I will generously give. And she made the cake. She made the meal. She prepared it for the prophet. And the prophet said, now go and take all the vessels you can find and go to, around to your neighbors and collect all the oil you can because after a while she realized there's no more vessels. I filled them all up. I've got so much, I've got so much plenty and so much blessing. You see, this is the understanding of a simple lesson for our lives. The universe knows exactly what you have need of and the universe is in control. 
of the infinite resources available to us. It's when we stop looking at saying, this is all that I have, I'm gonna consume it and die. It's when we shed that kind of consciousness and thinking, you know, I am heirs, I am sons and daughters, I am a child of God, and I am living in the realm of unlimited resources for my life. I can give freely because I know that that which I share, more is coming. And I can't outgive God. I can't outgive God in any way. Luke chapter 6, verse 38 says, Give, and it shall be given unto you. What a promise. We could stop right there. Give, and the truth is, it's going to be given unto you. So when you sow compassion and you give compassion, get ready. Compassion is coming to you. When you sow forgiveness, get ready. Forgiveness will be given unto you. When you give of yourself of love and you fit uh, it without any reservations and you love one another fully, know that love is coming to you. Know that as you share in hospitality in any way of kindness, know that all these blessings are coming back to you. I'm so excited for the many people who live, give it. It's given back to them and said, I'm giving sleeping bags to the homeless. I'm giving the food to help out. I want to share because I know that I have enough. I have plenty because I'm the child of God. And God is always in the realm of providing. Given it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For the measure you give will be the measure you get back. This last portion of this beautiful text is saying, to the degree, to the level, and in the attitude of which you are sharing generously, that's the way it's going to return back to you. So when you say, well, begrudgingly, well, you're making me give, you're making me share, you're making me uh, help somebody else. They don't deserve it. Uh, I got all kinds of judgments about how they'll misuse it and how they'll, you know, on goes. Well, that measure, that attitude is exactly what's coming back to you and how it will return to you. Again, you're creating the cause that will bring about the effect. So an attitude of judgment and condemnation about someone else. Now, trust me, what someone does with the gift that you give with them is up to them and the universe. It's between them. But what's important between you and God, you and the universe, is the attitude in which you gave. That's what's of great value. The measure, the degree of your generosity. I'm not talking just finances, although that's a beautiful way to share and being generous. Generosity is giving of everything, giving of ourselves, giving of our time, giving of our talent, giving of our treasures. It's all on so many different dynamics. So what I'm talking to you about is what are you willing to be generous with? And who are you willing to be generous to? Because the measure and the attitude and the approach that you are giving is how it's going to be returned to you. You have the control. You could create a dynamic tsunami of generosity coming into your life if you came with that attitude of saying, I know and I believe. I can give, 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 give. I can love someone unlimitedly, even though they disagree with me on Facebook. <laughs> or I can love and I can be patient and I'm going to give patience with them, even though they have a different political view than I do. I can do all this. I can give generously of every aspect of my life. I can forgive. I can be patient. I can be meek. I can be all these things. I can be generous in hospitality. I can be kind. I can do so much because as I do, this is cause that creates the effect. Now, God is ever generous and ever willing and ever ready and knows the desires of our heart before we even ask. But it's up to us to create the kind of cause that will bring, bring about the kind of effect that we so desire. So the question is, are you wanting a dribble of blessing? A trickle? Are you wanting little drop, 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 driplets of goodness? 
Or are you wanting the floodgates to open up? And if so, then create the tsunami, create the cause that brings about the effect that you so desire within your life. Give and it shall be given unto you of anything and everything that you have. Think about the different ways that you can give of all things that you possess and all things within you, within your personality and within you as an individual. Share constantly. Look at new ways that you might be engaging in greater generosity. Because with that measure you give, to that degree, to that level, that's how it's returning to you. So today, it's up to you, up to your game, up to you to raise the level, to increase the measure for the abundance of good weights for you. God's great payout is there, waiting for you, ready to be dispersed according to the measure you share. Amen.